So those of you who follow our blog, and if you don't, please go visit www.pennyandthekits.com. I will put the link in the description. But those of you who follow the blog know that all but Penny, and by the way, I'm Robin. <laughs> Some people think I'm Penny. Penny is actually uh, the Maine Coon cat, uh, my special needs cat who has diabetes and kidney disease. Uh, and she was a rescue too, but I adopted her from a rescue. And then the other four of my indoor cats are actually one of my feral cats, kittens. Um, she showed up pregnant in my yard just about two years ago. And uh, I couldn't find help for them, so they became my indoor cats. But, and you can read their entire story on our blog. But they were rescued, the boys and the girls were rescued. Uh, just about two weeks apart, like 10 days apart. And by the time they were reunited again, it was like three and a half weeks. So uh, my boys are bonded and my girls are bonded. Uh, but reintroducing them was nothing short of a nightmare and trying to introduce them to Penny was even worse. <laughs> so um, I took some bad advice in the beginning and when it was time and everybody was clear by the bet and everybody was dewormed and everything, I took some bad advice and put them all together, and that was nothing short of disastrous. Um, Pe Penny, Patchy, and Spunky, the three girls, uh, pretty much, besides a little bit of growling at first and stuff, and a little bit of passive aggression from Penny, which she's really good at, uh, they pretty much did very well together. And Rascal, besides some growling in the beginning, he did very well with everybody. But Rascal's the friendly one. He's the one that got them all rescued to begin with. Mischief, on the other hand, who is the most feral of all the kittens, uh, he had some problems. And after three weeks of trying to have them all together, he was just charging at all the girls, chasing them, cornering them, and it got ugly. I mean, he was just aggressive. There's no other way to put it. He was aggressive. He was very skittish. I remember when I first opened the doors, and this should have clued me in that I was doing the wrong thing. When I first opened the doors uh, to let them all out together, it took five days for Mischief to leave his safe room. I'm actually sitting in a safe room now. Um, I do have to, we remodeled the house since they moved in, uh, but we didn't do his room because I didn't want to upset him. Uh, cats don't like change, so I'm waiting until he's fully integrated and doing well with no problems before we rip up the carpet. We have hardwoods underneath here and are in great condition uh, and repaint and everything. But so that's, this is a safe room that I'm in right now. Um, he's sleeping somewhere else. So... I'm doing this now because I see over and over again, and I, unfortunately I see too many cats being put in shelters uh, from aggressive uh, aggression situations, cats being rehomed, and that really wasn't an option for us. Uh, Mischief was very bonded with Rascal, and I knew that to separate them would probably kill Mischief. I'll be really honest. Rascal is his lifeline, his best friend. Uh, you know, if you saw, and I, I guess I have to show more of it, but their relationship is is very beautiful, and, and he loves Rascal, and I don't think that Mischief would thrive without Rascal in his life, uh, at least at this point. So, and especially in the beginning. So, they've been bonded from the get-go. They were the first two kittens that I saw outside, and that's when I realized that my fluffy, my feral fluffy had kittens. And they were in the shed together. They've been inseparable from the moment that I saw them. So that wasn't an option. Rehoming them together was kind of an option, but Mischief is semi-feral. I don't know how he would do with other humans. And I had a hard time even with the idea of rehoming Rascal when he is the one who made friends with me before he was even separated from his mother, like before his mom started rejecting him. Um, and he would be out in that shed when they all came to eat. And even though his mother would be sitting right there watching, uh, he would still come be friendly with me. So I had a very, very difficult time uh, with with the idea of parting with Rascal. So our only other options were to be let Mischief live in a room for the rest of his life and have everybody living separate lives, which is a lot of work and it's a lot of time. And 
I don't think a cat should have to live that way. And the other option would be euthanasia. And again, to euthanize a sick cat is hard enough. I, I couldn't in my head justify euthanizing him when he's perfectly healthy and his whole life ahead of him, especially because he's a really sweet cat when he's not manic. Um, and a shelter, it was not an option at all. I, I would put that cat to sleep before I would put him in a shelter. Absolutely. Um, because he would not thrive there and he would probably not get adopted and I would never break his heart that way. So that's just not an option. So <clears throat> we tried everything we have tried. Well, let me tell you when things went really bad that last night, we put him back behind closed doors and rascal would sleep with him at night. We'd come in his room with him at night and then rascal would come out during the day because he got along with everybody just fine. We fed everybody on either side of the door of his safe room. I have a baby gate up. Uh, it's open right now because mischief's out with everybody right now. Um, we did the mutual playtime on either side of the door. We did all their meals on either side of the doors. And they would be able to eat within two feet of each other with that baby gate between them. But as soon as they were in the same room together, he would charge and hiss and swat and everything again. We tried spirit essences. We tried composure calming treats. We tried Zilkeen, which is expensive and did nothing. Um... We tried Feel Away Multicat. We tried regular Feel Away. And, and the Multicat did make a slight difference, um, but not enough. I mean, it did make a difference, but just not enough. Um, I have watched more episodes of My Cat from Hell than I can count. I have read Pam Johnson Bennett books, and I did all the advice, all the experts. I spent hours upon hours upon hours on the internet trying everything. New toys. These cats were more toys than I ever had as a kid. And I was spoiled as a kid. I mean, it, it's just incredible what we've done. And as soon as we would put him, especially with Penny, he would hiss and charge and swat. And I cannot have cats living in fear like that. So after we exhausted all of our options, we, I did notice that he was much more, he was a different cat when he's outside of the safe room than he is in his safe room. And I put two and two together and I'm like, we got to try Prozac because I'm out of options. It was like Prozac or maybe euthanizing him. And, and I couldn't do anymore. We were burnt out. Me and my mom were at each other's throats. It, it just, it, it was bad. And um, so I took him to the vet and she agreed that maybe Prozac would be a good idea and let's try it. So we put him on a very minimal dose, two and a half milligrams a day. He's a 10 pound cat. And let's just see what happens. So I have to note, that the first couple of weeks it was it was he wasn't really calming down yet it does take a while to work but i also have to note that around week 10 to week 12 13 um somewhere in that time he started getting very depressed and he started not eating well and he was starting to lose weight and it took me a lot of tricks to get him to eat enough food um, but we did. He didn't get sick or anything. Uh, his liver enzymes were fine and everything. I was a little worried because his liver enzymes were slightly elevated when he first started the Prozac. So, um, But I also think that at this point depression was setting in and it was time to do something. So at this point we had a schedule where the girls and Rascal were out full time. Rascal would sleep in Mischief's room most nights with Mischief. Or, and sometimes they would play. They didn't really sleep. They played a lot. And <laughs> you could hear them banging around in here. And um, so then after Penny got her fluids and everybody got situated in the morning, had their breakfast and everything, the girls would get locked up. Mischief would come out for two hours. And then Rascal and Mischief would get on my mom's room for a few hours just to break up Mischief's day so he's not always sitting in the same room. He's got another window to look out of my mom's room. He's got a window here too. He's got a bed to sleep with Rascal. They have more room to play. The bigger cat condos in my mom's room. And then after that, Mischief would come back in his room. We would do dinner, do mutual playtime. And then I would close the door and go to bed. And what happened was one night when I was outside feeding the ferals, it was in the evening and I was outside feeding my feral cats. My mom went into her bedroom for something and Mischief got out. And I was, she, she yells outside to me, oh, Mischief's out. And I'm like, what? And I was so frustrated that I didn't even come in. I was just, I'm finishing up with these ferals. It was really cold out. I wanted to get done. And I figured I'll just leave it alone. And I told mom, just keep an eye on them until I come in. 
And I came in about a half hour later because it's never just a quick feed with my feral cats. And, uh, and every, I mean, there was a lot of hissing, a lot of posturing, but he was not chasing anybody. He didn't have, like, he would have, he would get patchy cornered. And one of the things that I had been working on while he was in isolation and we were working on figuring out how we were going to integrate them was increasing Patchy and Spunky's confidence and Penny's too. Because mind you, in all of this, Penny was diagnosed with stage four kidney disease. She almost died. Uh, she was very sick for about two months in the winter of 2016. So we had to work on building her confidence too because Penny, who used to be a really ballsy cat, he would go swat at her and she would go like this. And I'm like, no, Penny, you can't do that. And he would chase Patchy and chase Spunky, especially Spunky. In the beginning, when we had him out for the three weeks together, Spunky was the target. And he would go after her and after her and after her. And it was relentless in him going after her. And he wasn't doing any of that. He, you know, there was chasing and hissing and, and a little bit of, but the girls had more confidence. And if he got too close to Spunky, to this day, if he gets too close to Spunky and she doesn't want him around her, she'll hiss. And he has a respect for her now. And I think it was a combination of me working on his confidence, working on their confidence. And a few times in the beginning, he was chasing Patchy. She would go hide. I would lure her out with like uh, a peacock feather. We buy these peacock feathers from Walmart and the cats love to play with them. And um, they're like in the crafts department at walmart.com. And I'll get Patchy to come out and attack a peacock feather. And I made sure that during mutual playtime that the girls would actually attack prey, including Penny. And that did wonders for their confidence. So when he came back out again, I have much more confident female cats in the house. So that helped. So it, it was like an hour that they were together and nobody got hurt. So I was like, okay, let's try to build on this. So, and that was in December or November of 2016. This is now April, 2017. And tonight or tomorrow night for the first time, we're gonna try an overnight. We're gonna try not locking him up tonight and just see how it goes. Um, but where we're at right now is that the past couple of days, knock on, knock on wood, and he does not like Penny. And the past couple of days, he's gone nose to nose with Penny and he hasn't hissed or swatted at her. He does shake his head when he walk away like, no, like I don't like her. You have to understand that she's stage four kidney disease. She smells like stage four kidney disease. She's got horrible teeth. Um, not quite needing a dental yet, but it, it, you can almost see green fumes coming out of this cat's mouth. So she smells sick and that's why he doesn't like her. Um, and I actually explained to him it's not her fault, you know, and, and she's tough as nails and she's not acting sick. Uh, she barely acts, acts sick. She, you'd never know she was sick if you didn't see her blood work or the litter box. Um, uh, so, and the first cat that he bonded with besides Rascal was Spunky. And I couldn't believe it. Spunky has her spot on top of my bed. She's got a cat bed on my bed. And he has a blanket that he likes to lay on. And I have pictures. The first time it happened, I couldn't believe it. They were sleeping on the same bed together. So basically, the whole point of this video, and we'll see how tonight goes. I'm, I'm kind of scared. I'm nervous. And I'm excited at the same time, as you can see. Um, I'm really hoping it goes well because I never want to have to lock this cat up again. Although he's very conditioned. When it's time to come in here, he comes in here, he gets a snack. I shut the door and, and Rascal stays with him some nights and sometimes Rascal wants to come right back out. So, and Mitch is cool with that, you know. He's conditioned, so he's okay with it. But I want my life back. <laughs> and I want him to fully be a part of the family, you know. So what we did with that first hour is we increased very slowly. I would wait. We would let him out an hour a day with the girls until there was absolutely no more hissing or swatting. And then we would increase like an hour and a half. And then every time I increased, things would heat up again. And then they would calm down again. So once things calm down, then I would go two hours and then three hours and four hours and five hours. And... Up until today, we've been, he comes out about 7 o'clock in the morning and goes in his room, maybe 11 o'clock at night, sometimes 11.30, depending on how late I'm, wor I'm working. I kind of split up my work day. Um, so sometimes I'm working at 10 o'clock at night. Um, so 
I guess we're up to, yeah, uh, from 7 to 11, that's so what? That's uh, 16 hours a day. So now we're taking a big leap because I'm not getting up in the middle of the night to increase an hour each time <laughs> unless I have to. I'm hoping I don't have to, but I will if I have to. Um, so tonight we're going to take the big leap. As long as we have no problems between now and bedtime, we're going to take that big leap into overnight, which is like seven, eight hours. Um, and we'll see how it goes. But I can tell you one of the things that you read, and even Jackson Galaxy does it, and I'm not taking away from him. He, he works miracles with cats. But one of the things that they always tell you to do is feed them all together. And I happen to be on the phone with Michael from Young Again uh, Pet Food. Uh, it's the dry food that I'm always advocating for because I'm a firm believer in it. If you're going to feed dry food, the only food I will feed my cats, the only dry food I will feed my cats is Young Again. If they stop making it tomorrow, my cats aren't getting dry food. Um, and he's, he's the president of the company, and he will get on the phone with you and help you work out some things. And one of the things he said that made sense to me was that cats are used to competing for food. I'm like, but Michael, you don't understand. I've been feeding these cats since they were in utero. They never had to compete for food. I never feed out of one food bowl. I have five or six dry food bowls throughout the house. Most of them are hardly ever touched. <laughs> and everybody has their own separate wet food, okay? But I kept forcing them to eat together in the hallway. Like the girls would be in the hallway, Mischief would be in his room, and Rascal would be also in the hallway most of the time. And he said that I was creating competition by making a big deal out of feeding time and also by forcing them to eat together. So he said, start feeding them in separate spots. So instead of me forcing Patchy to eat in a hallway and forcing Spunky to eat in a hallway when they didn't want to most of the time, I would let them eat wherever they wanted to. Spunky likes to eat in my room. Patchy likes to eat in this box that we have out in the kitchen. Penny eats wherever I put the food down. And... Once I stopped forcing the issue, that's when things started to get better with their relationships. So it was kind of like a, a little bit of a let go and let God type of thing. The Prozac has a lot to do with it. And I got to tell you, the Feel Away Multicat, even though it didn't work by itself, I don't think that we would be this far without it, really. Um, when I first heard about it, it was like on a manufacturing problem and you couldn't get your hands on it and I, I managed to get a box off of eBay <laughs> um, and then Comfort Zone started making one that is with Feel Away but it doesn't seem to be as effective as the name brand Feel Away so I will also include links for that if we run out of pheromones I know it because then then my other cats who usually get along start hissing and swatting at each other and I'm trying to make this as less stress as possible. I'm tr I don't want cats hissing at each other all the time if I can help it. And it still happens occasionally, especially Spunky. She's just, she's a bitch like her mom. <laughs> her mom's a bitch too. And <laughs> she's mean to the boy cats out there, the guys that protect her. Um, so Spunky's got a little bit of her mom in her, but she doesn't ever hurt anybody. She just hisses and flounces away because she thinks she's great, you know. But I, the biggest things were the Prozac, Feel Away Multicat, working on the victim cat's confidence. I cannot stress that enough. Spunky was a victim when they were first together and now she don't take a shit. And he's actually very respectful of her. And if he knows that she doesn't want him around, he will not go near her. He'll find somewhere else to go nap or anything. He's very, very respectful of Spunky especially because I've really worked hard on her confidence because she was so timid and scared of him. I mean, she was his number one victim when he was out the first time. So I will update and uh, and keep everybody posted how this went. I'm actually going to do a blog post on this once I'm done switching. I'm, right now I'm switching hosts for my blog, so I haven't added any new material. I'm doing it myself, and I'm an amateur at this stuff, so <laughs> it's taken a lot longer than it probably needed to be if I just bit the bullet and had somebody else do it, but I figured I better learn this stuff. Um, so I will update on the blog. And there will be a video to follow if, when we get, and not if, when we get to the point that this baby gate comes down. It's actually a pet gate. When that gate comes down, my mom's videoing it, and I'm going to cry, and I'm going to have a freaking party. And the cats are going to get tuna fish afterwards. <laughs> so uh, we'll see how it goes tonight. But um, I, I guess one of the main points that I want to bring up is that the expert's advice is always great. But sometimes you have to kind of just go with your gut with certain little nuances and one little tweak 
of the expert's advice can make all the difference in the world. So it's, it's kind of a case of know thy cat, go with your gut, and try to see you know what works and what doesn't work. And the other thing I've learned is something that I say all the time, and if you're my Facebook friend, you know if you're on my personal page, I say this all the time. The definition of insanity is doing the same things over and over again and expecting different results. If something's not working, change it. I waited too long to put them on Prozac. I waited too long because I kept trying to force things the way that they said by the book, all these experts, and it's great advice, and some of it worked, but not all of it did. And the things that weren't working, I kept pushing for too long. And hindsight is 2020. And I realized some, especially the feeding them together when it wasn't necessary. And Michael brought up a very good point about the food being competition. So if you think that that's not working for your case, then try feeding them separately and see if you remove the competition aspect. That's probably one of the best pieces of advice. And this guy's not a behaviorist. He's not a vet. He's a president of a cat food or of a pet food company. But he has cats and he knows cats. And sometimes lay people's experience trumps experts. I, I That's happened with the diabetes. It's happened with the kidney disease. It's happened with a lot of things. And in this case, it's also helped. So stay tuned. I'll keep everybody posted. If you don't already like Penny in the Kits on Facebook, then look us up. It's Penny Ampersand the Kits on Facebook. We're on Instagram. Penny uh, at, I guess it's the at symbol. Penny and the Kits with A-N-D. And our website is www.pennyandthekits.com. I'll include links where you can find us on social media in the description below. So stay tuned and wish us luck tonight, please. Bye.